What's up, guys? It is the Brosis again. Um, we are going to do something a little bit different today. This is a visual novel called Juniper is Not. It's a game that I found a little bit earlier today, actually, before I had to go to work unexpectedly, because work is dumb like that. <clears throat> anyway, um, it's, like I said, it's a visual novel, something that I usually don't get to play a whole lot of, uh, just because I can't find any that are, you know, not pornish, uh, for lack of a better term, and to sound stupid, pornish. Um, unfortunately, as probably a lot of you know, most visual novels, or a good amount of them, are usually either only in Japan... Uh, or Japanese, and then there's the vast majority of them that are uh, either hentai-ish or uh, have some kind of suggestive theme, and that's kind of iffy. You know, personally, I don't care, but, eh, you know, it's kind of a hit-or-miss touchy thing. Um, anyway, from what I can tell, <clears throat> this one is clean. It was a free game. I'll put the download link in the description if you guys want to try it out. From what I've played of it so far, which, like I said before, is not very much because I got called into work, um, it was pretty good. Uh, the atmosphere of it, as much atmosphere as a visual novel can have, I guess, was really decent. Uh, the characters and the writing were actually pretty spot on. It wasn't kind of junk, uh, junky or anything. There wasn't it wasn't a whole lot of just iffy things or grammatical errors or any of that. Uh, that I could see as of right now, but let's just jump right in um, and see where it goes from there. Start! <clears throat> of course, I will be reading everything, just because it'll be entertaining, I guess, hopefully. Uh, much of these stone walls and floors have weathered into dirt and dust, revealing the foundation. Much of the ceiling, too, has crumbled to the ground, layering in flecks and bits. Below me now is such tired soil. Tired, tired soil. <sighs> there isn't much to do here but burn dead leaves and wait. Watch the smoke rise, curl up fresh and tickle the inside of your nose. Dull as a bone it is. Well, dull as bones, at any rate. But what can I do? I'm stuck. Some might say cursed. I'd rather say bound. I don't like to think very much about it. I kneel to the small fire I've started, taking up a few embers and loam into my palm. It's this glow that stirs me and reminds me that my heart is still beating. I bring the scorched earth close to my face, shut my eyes and breathe it in. I taste it and spit. It's barren. I'm probably going to wait here forever. <clears throat> what? Hmm. There's an unnatural rustling not far off. West? West, I. What is it? Who? Another? Here? My eyes sharpen and my ears perk up. I feel my heart thumping into my throat. Should I be forward? Give a call? Would that work? Cry out, plead, help, help, damsel! A fool sort of lie. Would that work? Hmm, no. Go still. Listen. Just listen. Whatever it is, it's right busy about here. Noises tumbling, rough from old doorways, chest wine open, shops and homes are explored. A scavenger, then? Someone found this place? <laughs> him hearing these sounds is just odd I sh it shouldn't be odd but it is strange I should remember such sounds <clears throat> oh the noise is getting closer is it? I'm imagining this no no it's surely in the manor now poking about the kitchen and lounge hmm I decide, on the chance that it will find its way to the ballroom, to stand. I take a good posture and wait at this new company. And to my surprise, it, he, shows it up at the door within the next minute. A boy? A man? What kind of thing's this again? 
He's carrying a pack and has a bottle on his waist. Maybe he's a traveler, then. Hmm. Doesn't look like he's noticed me yet. He's just wandered in, stare drift. After a few steps, I catch his eye. He moves a little closer to me, and the face, and then some more to see my feet. He stops there. He's staring now, and doing nothing more. Come here. As if realizing something, he stiffens. His heart beats loud in the air. I need your help, so come on. Come here. He doesn't bend. What is he up to? What does he think this is? I speak again, this time with a little bite. The hell are you waiting for, tit? Oh, oh, have I been rude? Have I been rude? Oh, well. You're cordially invited to move your dumb legs. For the first conversational words I've spoken in centuries, they could have been worse. He shakes with fear and stands back. A, a fiend? Slow, are you? What does it matter? What are you pissing your trousers for? Get over here. Ah, no way. You'll eat my soul. Au revoir. <laughs> a smile cracks along my face. <laughs> your soul? Oh, oh my. Oh my, oh my, oh my. When was the last time I laughed like this? I grin. I grin so brightly, watching, chuckling, while he shrinks back a little and a little more. <laughs> eh? Eh? Eh now, person. Person, you're just perfect. A jester! Why don't you lend me an ear? Before I <laughs> eat your soul? <laughs> At my laughter, he glares. Stealing himself, he answers me. You're not catching me, demon. Got that? I've read the stories. I'm tired, but I ain't stupid. Am I that famous? <laughs> Mercy, I left a mark. You know what I mean. <laughs> Hell, I really don't. Fiends, devils, demons, all of you. I know how it is. And how is it? You're all foul and you try to trick people. Trick you? Trick... Tri <laughs> oh! Oh, I really just can't believe it. What's happened in the years I've been gone? And what if I'm not trying to trick you, person? What if I just want to hear you? Just want to hear me? What the hell? Like, what is it you've read, lad? Do tell. I'd love to hear a story. I'm a little bored. I think I'll just leave. <clears throat> you turn tail on a bloodthirsty wicked fiend? Look, I know something dirty when I see it. He ain't fooling no one. <laughs> He's so precious. Alright, alright, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you, I, like all us fiends, devils, demons, am plainly trying to win your extravagant soul through my dastardly wit. Honest and true, I'm a rook. But please, please, at least tell me of what you've read. What the hell do you want to listen to me so much? Huh? Because I'm bored in your voice. Ah, your voice. I swoon. Bah, horse feathers. I really do want to listen. Would you be so kind? Oh, he's genuinely considerate. Such a delight. I do want to hear him. In the meantime, I look him over a little more finely. He's got a fair face, but through the fabric of his shirt, I can see he's muscled. A surprise. Even the soldier boys seemed a bit lean back in the days I rode at Marais. Moral. Morlay. I can't pronounce this. It's my own damn voice and I can't even pronounce what I'm trying to say. God, help me. I wonder what it is he does. He smells like an animal in the most pleasant way that can be said. It's quite good. Also, he has the faintest scent of watercress about him, mingled with black oil. What a peculiar lad. <sighs> hmm. I'd really rather not stick around. Hmm. I guess I can tell you some things, though. Uh. Yeah, I guess I can tell you. As long as you stay put, you hear? <laughs> What's keeping me from you is more powerful than I care to challenge, person. 
Yeah, right. Whatever. Here's a story. One from a book I read a lot when I was little. <laughs> oh, pardon, pardon. I find it very hard to think of you any littler. Quiet. <laughs> there was a cobbler in Whitaker who had nothing to eat. He was poorer than dirt and didn't have a girl, and it made him real sore. He didn't have a girl. A dame, a sweetheart. He didn't have a wife. Ah, continue. While he was walking down an alley, he met this man. He had a dark cloak with a hood that covered his eyes, and the cobbler couldn't make heads or tails of it. He stopped and asked the cloak man if he'd like his shoes worked on. The that's stupid. Why would he do that? Because he needed all the work he could get. Well, he should have gone around ruining shoes if they was <laughs> if what he needed was work. The cloak man said he wasn't wearing shoes, but he could use a new pair. But obviously, the cobbler's a cobbler. Mmm, beach cobbler. So he didn't make shoes. He tells him that. And the cloak man says, actually, I could really use some new shoes. The cobbler look, looks at him weird and says he can get them if the guy's sick. And the cloak man says, would you do that? I'd do something for you, then. And the cobbler says, like what? And the cloak man says, perhaps anything. He leans forward darkly as he says this. I smirk at the action. Now, I know what you're thinking. I've heard this one before and know how it goes. Well, you don't. Because the cobbler says, perhaps not. And he walks away. How exciting. But here's the thing. While he's walking, he notices the alley's longer than usual. He doesn't think... Excuse me. He doesn't think about it, though. Thinks he's just tired from work and keeps walking. But while he's walking, he sees another man in a cloak and stops and asks if the man could use his shoes getting worked on. The cloak man says he doesn't have any shoes. Cobbler stops and looks at him. Says he'd better get moving. The cloak man says he could really use some new shoes. And while he's moving, you know? Mm hmm. I nod. He keeps running into this man in a cloak and can't find the end of the alley. Actually, every time it takes longer and longer till he sees a ma the man in the cloak. Ugh, can't talk. On the eighth time he runs into the man, he stops and asks what's the game. And the cloak man looks at him with yellow eyes. Says he could really use some new shoes. For what? The cobbler says. I don't know. The cloak man says. Perhaps anything. What do you want? The cobbler. No. The cobbler knows exactly what he wants, but fiends have yellow eyes and he knows a fiend. <laughs> Nonsense. I actually sighed hearing that. So what you're telling me is this story's anything if this story's anything good to adhere to, it's that I might have already trapped you. Dunno. I don't think you did. Why not? Hmm, he shrugs. I don't think you did. Hmm. I really must say, your manner of storytelling is queer. What? It's strange. Oh. I don't know, it's just very strange to my ears. I guess. How's your story end? The cobbler gets desperate and makes a pact with the fiend to get new shoes by the next day. The fiend will give him gold for him to do that. So the fiend gives him the gold, but he doesn't make it. The fiend traps him in the alley so he can't leave. His soul is taken and he's damned. The fiend eats his soul and leaves for a farm. A farm? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I snort. <laughs> That's comedy. I think it's supposed to mean something, but eh. Point is, don't get caught up with fiends no matter what. <laughs> You're getting caught up with a fiend right now. Well, you don't feel right. I what? He shakes his head. Nothing. Look at him and try to figure him out. Figure out his opinions and his story. In the time he's told it, he seems to have taken another idea of me. I'm not sure why that is, either. I appreciate you telling me that story. Don't mention it. Hmm. So opaque. You still wary of me? Yeah, a little. I frown. Well, do you want me to tell you another story? Hmm. The unsolicited offer throws me. Is he really asking? But no, if I'm too eager, I can't ask for that. No. 
My pulse. No, I'm fine. If you say so. I'm gonna go now. Go? Yeah. I have to go, so... I'm going. Uh, he, he begins to turn around. Stay, please. Please stay. Please, I won't take your soul. Honest, I won't. And then, like an idiot, I move my hand out, reaching for him with singular, wa singular wanting. I move past the second meter, past the circle's edge with my fingers, and withdraw with a start as they set a fire. Dropping to my knees, I scream. I cry out and howl, clutching the flames and smothering them. Tears crawl down my face, and I snarl with pain. I shut my eyes and moan. I hear him step a bit closer. You're stuck there? Looking up at him from the ground, I feel my teeth chattering. Oh no, I know why I want him to stay. Yes, I know. To rend him. Because as if, as if it just wasn't so funny enough that the vines sweat down from the walls and grass is borne through stones so close just out this, outside this putrid circle, now there's a human breathing before me. Comedy. Everywhere but here, but near to me, to my desolating blood. These years have damned me, cut and clawed beneath my skin. Scars invisible, but nevertheless blighting. I hate it. I hate, hate it so much. I hate this feeling it gives to my heart and the strength it takes in kind. I hate it. My flesh heats and I look away from him. Looking into his eyes enrages me. How long have you been there? Long enough to beg. Long enough, you hear me? Too long I've been in this stinking pile. It doesn't matter to you. I want to know. Well, I don't want to tell, I. Ugh, sorry, miss. Miss? Take a look at my clicking, stuttering hand and my sight still blurred with tears. It's sizzling. Small blazes dance between my fingers. I take my tongue to it, soothing the burns. You're a bold one, I. Calling me a flap? A what? Huh? No, no, you're, you're no flapper, lady. It means something different now. Miss is just what you're supposed to call older ladies, out of respect. Lapping the flames from the back of my hand, I glance at him. That right? Are you okay? I suck my ring finger and squint. What's that? All right, fine. Is that okay? All right. <laughs> All right, aye, aye. I am a fiend, yes. Heal fast. Though I can still feel it snap and pop in the joints. I whistle cold air through my digits and take myself from the ground. Are you going to stay? I... I could. Ah, uh, oh. Thank you. I'm actually lost right now. Ah, ah, lost, is it? Lost? <laughs> That's a sweet irony. Hmm? Don't look so adult, person. The irony's quite obvious here, isn't it? He squints. Think! After all, I cannot even be lost. Forever and ever, I'll know where I am, and where I am is... Stuck. I laugh again, but he doesn't find it funny. He doesn't seem to find it much of anything at all. I quit it, wiping away a figurative tear. <laughs> oh, oh, I know this place so intimately it red in your face. He jerks and gives his head a shake. If you... Hmm. Uh, uh, if you know where this is, do you, do you know where it's more? Uh-huh. So earnest. I don't know what more is. I know moors. Moors? Aye, moors. Moors, you follow? I don't know what those are. My, my, ain't this a right dizzy jig we're dancing? Time's making fools of us both. Ha! <laughs> his look's a bit hazy, as though he's having a hard time keeping his eyes fresh. I turn my head slight, silently. What's more, person? Where I was born. Live. A town. A new town. A city. I think it's been there for a while. That right. He doesn't speak, and I glance... He doesn't speak, and I glance over just quickly enough to catch him at the end of nodding. Did you know, this place was a moor for a time. 
this. I don't know what... What is that? It's a dead place, a wet place. I too was born in a moor. Can't your stomach read a mood? Pleading hell, I was about to tell a tale. Sorry. <sighs> You're hungry, is it? Starving. Us fiends here, we only eat souls and only for pleasure. Quit joking. Joking? Hey, you got any food? What are you blithering on about now? I look like I got food. I don't got any food, idiot. However, here. I thrust out my hands just before the barrier. Palms up. Hmm? Give me the chestnuts in your pack. I smell them. Uh, he hesitates. Why? So I can gobble them up. What do you think? I'll cook them for you. They're not long from the branch or the ground. Smells like you haven't cooked them. And nor have you eaten them. You prefer the taste of them cooked. Mm-hmm. Not slowly. I twitch my fingers, waiting. Is there something you want uh, for this? Your company for the morning. Till noon. That's it? I nod. Okay, deal. <coughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is where we are going to stop. Because I have no clue when this thing actually ends, and there's a legitimate save point or some nonsense, I'm not sure. But, this is about as far as I've gotten so far, so I think we shall save it here. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty much the exact same place that I saved it on my just random playthrough. I'm going to save it to slot 1. But, we will continue this next time. Uh, hopefully you like it. This has been The Brosis. This has been a game. Juniper's not. And you have been an audience. And I will catch you guys later. Goodbye. Goodbye.